Hello. There you are. Oh, come on. If you please. And this is Jane Eyre. Yes, just one of your tricks to come on foot. What the devil have you been doing this last month? I've been with my aunt, sir, who is dead. True Janian reply. Good angels be my guard, she comes from the abode of the dead. I said you were an elf. I'm no elf, sir. Truant. Absent from me a whole month. You're forgetting me quite, I'm sure. I thought you were in London, sir. I suppose you found that out by second sight. But I'm back. I had a letter from Mrs. Fairfax. Stay still. And did she inform you of what I went to do? Oh, yes, sir to buy a new carriage and to make arrangements for your wedding to Miss Ingram. Well, you should see the carriage, Jane. And tell me if you don't think it would suit Mrs. Rochester exactly. I wish at times I were a trifle better adapted to match with her externally. Tell me now, fairy that you are, you couldn't give me a charm or a filter or something of the sort. It would be past the power of magic, sir. Off with you, then. Go and stay your weary little wandering feet at a friend's threshold. Thank you, Mr. Rochester, for your great kindness to me. I'm strangely glad to be back again. And wherever you are, is my home. My only home. A fortnight of dubious calm followed. Nothing was said of the master's marriage. I saw no preparations. Mrs. Fairfax knew nothing. Strangest of all, he never rode over to Ingram Park. Then, one morning, he summoned me to the drawing room. Uh, sit down. Now, Jane. Thornfield is a pleasant place, is it not? Yes, sir. And you must have become, in some degree, attached to the house? I am indeed, sir. And to that foolish little child, Adele? Even to simple Dame Fairfax. I have an affection for them both, sir. And would be sorry to part with them? Yes, sir. Pity. It's always the way. The sooner you are settled in a pleasant resting place, then you must rise and move on. Must I? Must I leave Thornfield, sir? Yes, I'm sorry, Jane. I believe indeed you must. I shall be ready when the order comes, sir. It has come now. Then you are to be married. Exactly. Precisely. With your usual acuteness, you have hit the nail straight on the head. Soon, sir. Very soon, my dear. Miss Eyre. And you'll remember, the first time I intimated that I intended to take Miss Ingram to my bosom, you said, with that discretion I admire in you, 
that you and little Adele had better trot forthwith. I shall seek another situation immediately, sir. In a month, I hope to be a bridegroom. In the interim, I will myself look out for employment for you. I'm sorry to put you to any kind of no, trouble. No need to apologize. You've done your duty well. You have a sort of claim upon me. Indeed, I had heard of a situation that may suit the five daughters of a Mrs. Dionysius O'Gall in Western Ireland. Ireland? Oh, you like Ireland, I think. There are very warm-hearted people there, they say. But it is so far away. From what? Well, from England and from Thornfield. And? From you, sir. Good friends, Jane. Have we not? Yes, sir. And then we shall sit together in peace tonight. Even if we should be destined never to do so again. It's a long way to Ireland. I'm sorry to send my little friend on such weary travels, but if I cannot do better, How's it to be hoped? Are you anything akin to me, Jane, do you think? Because I have a strange feeling with regard to you, especially when you're near to me as now. And if that boisterous channel and 200 miles of land come broad between us, I'm afraid some cord of communion will be snapped. And then I shall take to bleeding inwardly. As for you, you'd forget me. That I never should, sir. Do you hear the nightingale singing in the wood? Listen. I wish I'd never been born. I wish I'd never seen Thornfield. Not because you're sorry to leave it? I love Thornfield. I love it because in it I've lived a full and delightful life. I've not been trampled upon. I've talked face to face with what I reverence, with what I delight in. No new, Mr. Rochester. It strikes me with terror and with anguish to be torn away from you forever. I see the necessity of departure, and it is like looking on the necessity of death. Now, where do you see the necessity? You have placed it before me. Mr. Ingram, your bride. My bride? What bride? I have no bride. You will have. Yes, I will. Then I must go. No, Jane. You must stay. I swear it. I tell you, I must go. Do you think because I'm poor, obscure, plain and little, I'm soulless and heartless? I have as much soul as you and full as much heart. And if God had blessed me with some beauty and much wealth, I would have made it as hard for you to leave me now as it is for me to leave you. my spirit which addresses your spirit. Just as though both had passed through the grave and we stood at God's feet equal. As we are. As we are. So.
So, Jane. You are a married man. Or as good as married. Married to an inferior to you whom I do not believe you truly love. I would scorn such a marriage, therefore I am better than you. Let me go. Jane, don't struggle so like a wild frantic bird. I am no bird. I am a free human being with an independent will and I shall leave you. It is your will that shall decide your destiny. I offer you my heart, my hand and a share of all my possessions. You play a farce with me. I ask you to pass through life at my side, to be my second self and best earthly companion. Come, Jane. Come hither. Your bride stands between us. My bride is here, because my equal is here. And my likeness. Jane, will you marry me? Do you doubt me, Jane? Entirely. You have no faith in me? Not a whit. Am I a liar in your eyes? What love have I for Miss Ingram? None, and that you know. What love has she for me? I shall never marry that mercenary. You, you strange, you, you almost unearthly thing. I love you as my own flesh. I entreat you. Accept me as your husband. Jane, I must have you for my own. Entirely my own. Will you be mine? Accept me. Marry me. Mr. Rochester, let me look at your face. Why are you in earnest? Do you truly love me? Do you sincerely wish me to be your wife? I do. And if an oath is necessary to satisfy, I swear it. Then, sir, I will marry you. Make my happiness. I will make yours. God pardon me and man meddle not with me. I have her and will hold her. Edward, there is no one to meddle. I have no kindred to interfere. No. That's the best of it. Are you happy, Jane? Yes. It will atone. It will atone. My love and constancy will expiate. God will judge me kindly. For man's opinion, I defy it. Edward? Come and bid me good morning, Jane. Oh, you look blooming and smiling and pretty, truly pretty this morning. Mm. 
Is this my pale little elf? <laughs> is this my mustard seed? It is Jane Eyre, sir. Soon to be Jane Rochester. In four weeks, Janet, not a day more. What, you're blushing. What's that for? Jane Rochester, it seems so strange. Yes, Mrs. Rochester. Edward Fairfax Rochester's girl bride. <sighs> Human beings never enjoy complete happiness in this world. I'm no exception. It's a daydream. Which I can and will realize. I wrote this morning to my banker in London to send me certain jewels he has in his keeping. I shall pour them into your lap. No. I shall hang diamond chains around your neck. Oh, please do not speak to me as though I were a beauty. I am your plain Quakerish governess. You are a beauty in my eyes. And I shall make the world acknowledge you a beauty. And then you won't know me. I shan't be Jane Eyre any longer. I don't speak to you as though you were handsome. Though I love you dearly. Too dearly to flatter you. Please, don't flatter me. Please, don't send the letter. <laughs> but you must ask me for something else. Very well. My curiosity is much piqued on one matter. What? Curiosity is a dangerous petition, Jane. Why did you go to such pains to make me believe you wished to marry Miss Ingram? Is that all? Thank God it's no worse. Well, I confess, I... Even though I risk rousing that fiery indignation of yours that I wanted to make you as madly in love with me as I was with you, I tried to arouse your jealousy. That was a burning shame, sir. Did you not think of Miss Ingram's feelings? Miss Ingram's feelings were no more than pride and greed. She was glad to be rid of me. You have a curious designing mind, Mr. Rochester. Well, my principles were never trained, Miss Eyre. I am so astonished. I hardly know what to say to you, Miss Eyre. Have you accepted him? Yes. I could never have thought it. He means to marry you? <laughs> he tells me so. Well, it passes me. Well, no doubt it is true since you say so. There are 20 years of difference in your ages. He might almost be your father. Oh, no, indeed, Mrs. Fairfax. And no one who saw us together would suspect it for an instant. Mr. Rochester looks as young and is as young as many men at five and twenty. Is it really only for love he is marrying you? Oh, I'm sorry. I do not wish to grieve you. But you are so young and so little acquainted with men. I wish to put you on your guard. Against what, Mrs. Fairfax? In this case... I do fear that there may be something found different to what either you or I expect. Why? Am I a monster? Is it impossible that Mr. Rochester should have a sincere affection for me? No, I dare say he is fond of you. But gentlemen in his station are not accustomed to marry their governesses. There have been times when, for your sake, I have been a little uneasy at his marked preference and have wished to put you on your guard. But I did not like to suggest the possibility of wrong. Wrong? Mrs. Fairfax, we are marrying. Last night, I cannot tell you what I suffered when I saw you coming in with him at such a late hour. It is enough that all was right. I hope all will be right in the end. Mm. Thank you. 
much I can tell you. It was not Grace Poole. It was nothing but a creature of your imagination. Oh, I must be careful of your nerves, my treasure. Sir, the thing was real. And your dreams beforehand. Were they real? Now, is the hall a ruin? You had another dream, Jane. And this, this veil, your special gift to me. Well, thank God, if anything malignant did come near you last night. It was only the veil that was harmed. Oh, to think what might have happened. Oh, but tell me who or what that woman was. Now, Jane, I'll tell you. It was half dream, half reality. Well, clearly a woman entered your room last night. That woman was Grace Poole. You said yourself she's a strange creature. Now, what did she do to me? To Mason? You were between sleeping and waking. You were feverish, almost delirious after that dream. And you saw her in a goblin shape. Horrible features, quite different to her own. You had a nightmare, Jane. But the spiteful tearing of the veil is real. And it is like her. Then why do I you keep... I you would ask me yet again why I keep such a woman in my house. When we are married a year and a day, I will tell you. Not before. Are you satisfied? I'll go and finish my packing. Oh, wait. Doesn't Sophie sleep with Adele in the nursery? Yes. You'd better share it with them tonight, Jane. I would do so gladly. And lock the door on the inside. Yes. Sleep well. No nightmares tonight, dear. Dream of happiness. Welcome, sir. Welcome, ma'am. Would you kindly come up to the communion rails? This is a most happy occasion. Mr. Rochester, I have had the privilege many Shall times... We... Proceed, Mr. Wood. Why, of course. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together. Let him now speak or else hereafter ever hold his peace. I require and charge you both, as you will answer at the dreadful day of judgment, when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you know any impediment why you may not lawfully be joined together in matrimony, ye do now confess it. For be ye well assured I declare that... declare the existence of an impediment. Marriage cannot go on. Proceed. I cannot proceed without some inquiry as to what has been said. 
I'm in a condition to prove my allegation. An insuperable impediment to this marriage exists. Please explain, sir. It consists in the existence of a previous marriage. Mr. Rochester has a wife now living. <laughs>